Good morning and welcome to Boeing Field in Seattle. This is the Michael Wilson version of the Boeing 707 420. I've selected the 420 model for these Rolls Royce Conways, which look, generally speaking, closest to the original engines on the Dash 80. And the barrel roll of the Dash 80 is our topic this morning. The engines on the Dash 80 were originally turbojets. I think they were uh, JT3As. That might be correct. JT4As. And the Conway, produced by Rolls Royce, uh, actually has a bypass fan. It's all contained in the cell, so you don't really see that outer ring like you do on the. Uh, JT3Ds that are going to be on our 320 model. But regardless, we have a bypass fan. We're not relying on just pure jet thrust, so getting off the ground is going to be much easier. A uh, quick check because this is my second attempt at this video of our weight. I've set our payload to 800. That's pretty much just the crew. Fuel weight for an hour, which we're not even going to need that, but she's already so incredibly light. Why not? Aviation fuel is uh, very cheap in the simulator. So let's get ready to take off. We're going to be taking a shot at replicating Tex Johnson's famous barrel roll of the Dash 80, which was performed over Lake Washington. As soon as we take off here, on Lake runway, Washington. Three, two, left. On runway, three, two, left. I love that plug-in, but I hate it in videos. Um, let's get the engine stabilized. Anyway, as soon as we pop up off the field, you should see Lake Washington to the right, Seattle slightly off to our left, and uh, I guess that would be Puget Sound, just the body of water in front of Seattle. All right, let's take off. Ten. There we go, just lift it straight off. Try to hold her back with uh, an empty jet. Oh gosh, look at that trim setting. Look how nose down that is. We're way out of the green. And I applied absolutely no uh, no force in the control column for that to lift off. Alright. Um, a narrative on Tex Johnson's barrel roll is in a book by Charles Kennedy called the Boeing 707 Haynes Owner's Workshop Manual. Fantastic book. I, I bought it because I saw it on Amazon. And i got to be honest, at first I thought, meh. Uh, the whole Haynes Manual thing just seemed a little corny to me. But when it showed up, um, oh, it's fantastic. I think it's more just Haynes had an agreement to work with Mr. Kennedy on that. Um, in no way would you open it and find it to be some sort of corny mimicking of a car manual. There's some fantastic history and information on how the 707 was developed, its competitors. Wonderful book. But there's also the narrative on Tex Johnson's barrel roll over the IATA meeting at a boat race back in Lake Washington. I'm going to do Lake Washington just because there's not really that much scenery on the other side of Seattle here. This is uh, X Plains default Seattle scenery. You can see we're headed for the Space Needle right now. Oh my goodness, that is annoying. Shame on me. We have 
fixed the flaps. Oof. All right. So we're gonna run up to about 350 knots. We're gonna apply full left and nose down to get up and over the city. Oh, that's really disturbing. Whoa, did we make it? And we're over. Let's go past these radio transmitters. Maybe a sim, but it's still a very disturbing sight to see ground and structures coming at your windscreen at 350 knots. Alright, I think we can say we've completed a barrel roll, a very sloppy one. Um, I am no real pilot, and I don't have the training to tell you how a 1G barrel roll should, in reality, be performed, but that is how Tex Johnson rolled the plane without overstressing it or causing any fuel flow issues. By maintaining 1G throughout the barrel roll, well, essentially the airplane doesn't even know it has rolled. are plenty of nerds on the internet with far better information than myself who can <laughs> you'll find a lot of blogs arguing about how uh, how and if the barrel roll can be performed at 1G and if it's really truly a barrel roll if you actually held 1G or not but uh, at the end of the day I think for most of us who cares I would love to see a full-size airliner roll over whether it's the textbook definition or not. Or I should say, I would love to see one in a controlled way roll over. Don't want to see any accidents. All right, and because that was so much fun, let's repeat it again. This time we're gonna do it without the city directly in our course. might need to turn that plug on, plug in, off, if we're going to continue this. A little irritated by her calls for landing gear. Alright, let's run the engines up. About 300 knots. And I'd like to start at about 300 feet. There we go. 300 and 400, that'll do. Full left aileron, pushing the nose towards the horizon. Continue, continue, keep going, keep going, keep going. And let's get out of it. Whew. There we go. All right, we've done both. And Boeing Field's right in front of us. And SeaTac, you can see threshold to both runways right there. It's interesting if you're ever driving here, you can see this freeway here that parallels Boeing Field. Uh, and there's frequently a lot of traffic there, but even when there's not, uh, it's not a very typical experience to get to drive the length of a runway. It's you an appreciation for how long it is at automotive speeds to get from one end of this field to the other. All right, well, you're going to get landings in my other videos. So at this point, I'm going to sign off, and I hope you've enjoyed barrel rolling Michael Wilson 707. Flaps. Flaps. Oh.
see if I can hold her steady here while we look at this. This oxygen mask is actually free floating. Thank you, Mr. Wilson. And that is what kept flipping in our faces while we were rolling there. A neat little feature. Uh, perhaps annoying if you're barrel rolling your aircraft, but a neat feature nonetheless. So thank you for joining us. Barrel rolling. Boeing 707.